let's finish this table. When I left you guys, I said that we needed to come up with a color choice for this table. I had my buds come over and they chose one of these five colors here. I uh, made this sample board with stain and finish, very similar to what the table would look like when done, so it would be pretty easy to choose. My initial reaction was I love this color. It looked very similar to the original. And I also just love just plain old natural. That is that wood just with some finish on it. No stain. Then we have a red oak, a couple walnutty browns and such. And like I said, these browns in oak always remind me of like 90s mom furniture and kitchens. So I usually like to stay away from them, but I figured I'd give that option out there. So we were between this and the natural. And when all was said and done, we chose the natural. And I think that was a very, very, very wise decision. This piece will look very antique, very original. You can see all the characteristics so I also will go ahead. Here's all the top. I want to try to keep a lot of that dark down in there. So I think I'm going to go, you know, sand this very, very carefully. I don't want to sand all that old stain out of the wood. I want to try to keep a lot of that down in the grain. But first, I also, since these some of these boards are very drastically cupped, there's a very drastic cup to them. When I re-glued them, you can see there is just a bit, a bit of a little, I don't know, ridge or something, you know, sticking up. So I'm going to start just by taking my hand plane across the, these little peaks and just get those leveled out. And then I'm gonna just start sanding it and see what we're working with. Okay, I got my Stanley Bailey number four. Got it all set up nice and tuned and sharp. Now, you can really see here, this one has a pretty high one. Levels out nicely down there. So we will go try this out. Just want to knock just the high spots down, and I might even just leave a little bit. It's looking pretty good. Just a hair more. There's one done. Work my way over here now. Pretty good work of this white oak. If anybody knows anything about wood, that is a 
damn hard wood in it. Got that pretty, pretty well mirror sharp there. Easy lap diamond plates. Highly recommend them, and I also would say to watch and study Paul Sellers woodworking. Because that fella sure knows his woodworking and hand planes. Now that I got that roughed out with the hand plane, I'll go with the card scraper now. Fine tuned a little better before we sand. I think this can take off a good bit of the finish as well. Yeah, that pulls that right off. Oh, that'll save them because with this finish. I tried sanding a little bit and it just gums up the sandpaper right away. So any I can get off with the card scraper. All the better. There she is now, all sanded up. I used 120 grit on that disc sander. I thought if I wanted any more abrasive, I'd probably lose some of that dark, uh, old dark finish, that character that we want to keep down in that grain. It looks like that brown I used to stain that might have been a different shade of brown, no biggie. I think that will be okay. And I mean, it is different wood, so this is all the same wood from the same tree. Then you bring in, you know, their cousin, Uncle Eddie or whatever. <laughs> and it's just same wood, different tree, you know, it's all different. But uh, I kind of like down here, have a couple little burn marks. Looks like a watermark down here. We want to leave all this character. We've got a lot of dings. All kinds of different things down in here. Some little scratches across the table. Nothing major. I mean the edges. All I did with these edges here, I just lightly hit them. I did, uh, there was one comment somebody said about they had the same table when the leaves closed, you'd have that little dip there. I uh, showed them, I showed the customer that. They said they loved it. They want to keep as much character. You know, this is their old farmhouse table. And uh, they want to keep that. They want to keep that character. They don't want a new table. So we're going to keep all this character. All I will need to do is just to block this out by hand. I'll just use 150 by hand. I won't go any, any higher than that. That should be more than enough. But I just want to make sure that that is nice and flat. And if there are any little swirlies from the sander, that'll help, you know, clear those out. I don't mind the character that was in the piece, but if I'm adding anything in it, I don't want that. I want the original character. I don't want anything added to it. You know, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you take your hammer and your screwdriver or whatever and ding it up just to make it look old. No, this is old. And I don't want to add anything to it. So I'm going to flip that over now actually. And give that bottom side a rough sand. Because I will seal coat that. Just to be safe. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. One thing I really need to do. Is just to scrape all this glue out. Kind of forgot that was there. <laughs> and we don't want that glue sticking down there luckily it looks like that is just gonna come right off Boop. Yeah. 
Well, I got this top finally all sanded out. Got all that old finish and got it pretty leveled. I wanted to make sure that this edge here was fairly level, as good as I could get it. And I wanna, I wanted to do this not really for aesthetic reasons, but more so I really want to get a good seal coat on the bottom of this because it's my understanding is that when you finish one side of a piece, like if you finish the top of this table and left the underside exposed, you can get some warping. So I want to have a uniform finish on either side to, you know, give it that extra oomph <laughs> and to help it every single way that I can to prevent it from warping in the future. And then also I picked up, I got these little uh, insert nuts that will go, and I marked here, uh, I, w I didn't, I wanted to drill new holes, and I also didn't want to just use, you know, the same old wood screws. Like I said, this is less than three quarters of an inch. That doesn't give you a whole lot to hold into, and I'm afraid that those screws, also with that wood being so thin, those screws you really start tightening that. This is such hard, brittle wood and dry and old. You start tightening that screw, and you're going to get a crack again. So I think what I'm going to do, the safest bet, you know, if I, you know, drill a hole, get these insert nuts in there, and I think we're going to be much better off. And then a machine screw, this is a 832nd, so this goes down in there with some washers, I'll explain it more later, that probably doesn't make much sense. But I did, I got these two sides on here, and I really wanted to start getting those lined up. And I ran into another problem that I have to address before I can really do that. So let me take you over here. These two sides are bowed worse than an old cowboy's legs. They are real bad. <laughs> and I did not notice that at first until I tried to get that started to set up. So I got this vise, created this sort of a vise here. What I need to do now is I need to get these two pieces sanded down and I'm going to wet them really, really, really good with some nice hot water, put them back in this vise and let that sit overnight, maybe keep wetting that and I want to get that, that big bend out of that. And you'll see why when this table goes back together, you know, I mean, you really don't want your wood all bent, <laughs> but yeah, especially on this table, you'll see why. I can't have these bent, they have to be as straight as possible. So let me get these sanded down now and get them back in this vise. This will be the top side. And this lip right here is exposed. It sticks out maybe a little over an eighth of an inch around the outside of the table. So the tabletop will sit you know, like up to there. So you see this here. And then we have a bow that comes in. I don't know if you can really see it on camera. Here. Let's see. It's not the worst bow in the world, which is why I know that I can get the bow out. I don't even know if you can really tell in camera. The one was worse than the other not a lot but it's enough since that tabletop since this will be sitting like this and that top comes down and sits like this and this sticks out proud of the tabletop you will see that bow so I need to get that bow out best as I can
I got these all sanded down and ready to go and I got them set on this homemade vise but I also need to wet them first distilled water I don't want to use regular tap water who knows what minerals are in there and what that how that might discolor the wood so we're going with distilled to be safe and then I don't know if you can see there that's got quite a little bow in that as well so I'm going to put this up on top and try to get that straightened out as well. So I'm just going to wet these down real good, real good. I got the heater running, it's nice and warm in here, and let this sit up overnight. I'm just really soaking this. I got these little spacer blocks here. That there, get that in the middle. Pretty middle to me. This one a little wet. Here's a little bit better view of if you can get a good a, a good look at that. It's a little hard to see on camera, but if you look at the ends, they are, that's definitely bent downward how I want it. I'm going to let this sit for maybe an hour or two. I'm going to come back to it, re-wet it a little bit more, and then uh, loosen those clamps just a little bit. Just because I don't, like I said, I don't want the bow to go back the, the whole other way. And then we'll let that sit overnight. But uh, yeah. yeah, I should have nice even pressure both on both sides. We've got a good bow there going the other way. Let's just uh, cross our fingers and hope this works. Okay, here it is. Sat overnight. It's all dried out. And I even hit it with a hair dryer just to make sure that it is all nice and dry. Doesn't even feel damp really. Crossing my fingers on this one, I don't think it was a cure-all, but I think it might have been a little bit of a fix. Tell you, tightening this last night was about as scary as tightening that little, uh, the little E string on a guitar. Probably more scary than that. Can't really hear guitar strings uh, creaking. It's not perfect, but it'll do. That'll do. I don't have to make a new one, which is nice. These, they look pretty good. We take a look at these here now. That was the worst of the two. You can see there is just a little bit of a bend left. That's probably as good as it'll get. It's funny though, if you look from this side, it's perfectly straight. Come up here, a little bit of a bow. Maybe I could even just sand a little bit off. 
it's like I said that sticks out a little bit underneath the top of the table so if I just sand this back just feather it back just a hair maybe that one thousand percent straight completely happy with that one that'll be good time to let these dry up get back to sanding the rest of those pieces now all that's left is getting these two leaves sanded down this is the one that I had glued up so I just need to clean this glue off the bottom and I will sand since I am finishing both sides of the leaves as well so I will just just rough sand that with the 120 on the disc sander and then just clean it off with the 180 by hand As you can see the strip that I had added in here it's got the darkness down in the grain that I wanted it's still really light compared to the others the others are much more warm golden brown this is a little more gray so what I need to do is just to take this brown stain and try to work that in you can see that brown is matching that much more much close much more closely <laughs> so I'm gonna work that in there get that stained and let that sit a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and sand that out and I think that'll all blend together much much more nicely I'm sure I'm going to get 400 comments. Oxalic acid is such a good stain remover. Remember, the name of the game in this restoration is to leave everything as original as possible, to leave the character that is existing, and to hide anything that we put in here ourselves. Here she is all laid out. I got all the rough hand sanding and all the sanding pretty much done I got some new sandpaper to try and that is 180 grit I figured maybe we'll just do 150 or you know instead of doing the 150 to 220 try my luck with the 180 shop I used to work at years ago that's all we used and it always worked out very nicely so you know save a little time I think this top is looking just precious <laughs> it's not perfect and it's not gonna be it's not new still see a lot of that 
finish down in there. A lot of the characters still remaining. This should finish up very nicely. Now I need to get this flipped over, figure out a way to get this top reattached. Cross our fingers, say our prayers, and hope everything goes well. Now I got the table flipped upside down and I'm trying to get this back together. It's a very interesting design. I really haven't seen much of anything built this way. Everything is almost built backwards and then forwards and then backwards again. <laughs> it's such a pain. I'm sure that's probably why this design wasn't very popular. The slides don't attach to the tabletop like on a normal table. They attach to these stretchers that run from side to side and then they screw into these sides and the sides are what hold the top on so pretty much everything on here works together and then when these slide out your legs will move because those leg stretchers they screw on to the slides as well so when this leaf slides out or anything those legs come with it which is nice it's not a permanent fix to the you know base of the table but uh, where I'm at now, this, I got this in, I got the one leaf on, then I kind of realized why they had so many shims in this. Uh, kind of when it was built in the first place, they should have just, instead of, you know, making it to size or whatever, I mean, they just sh had to shim everything to get everything working right. It wasn't really... I guess built right in the first place uh, yeah so a hundred years later here we are and I'm just gonna try to reuse these shims so the problem I have obviously I can't really get this out because I pounded that in with the mallet let me get that out so I got this uh, one leaf in you can see how that little Z clip goes right into that and surprisingly it's a pretty nice tight fit I still have to put the one the one more in there but it's a very nice tight fit all along there but my issue I don't know if you can really see that the end of this here should go underneath that leaf and right now it's very tight and it it really won't go underneath that leaf I don't know if it's just because it's upside down it is so hard though for one person especially trying to film this to get this together to know what's really happening until you're right side up uh, so I'm gonna put those shims back in obviously I know that these were shimmed up, so that will raise that all up. So that will raise this up. And then this leaf was shimmed as well, I believe. So then that would, maybe I won't do the leaf. Yeah, I think I just need to shim up. You know, because whenever they made this table, these should have been up a little bit more because this is affecting a lot. This affects the level of the whole piece. Uh, yeah, because if you shim here, that drops it down. If you shim here, it raises that up. So we're going to shim here, raise it, or lower, technically, if it's right side up. So we're going to lower that down more. So then I believe that this piece will go underneath because even when that leaf is tucked under the table, this end piece should tuck underneath that tabletop. Probably doesn't make sense right now, but it hopefully will soon. Well, I messed around with that a little bit more. Didn't get too much farther with it. <laughs> Customer stopped over. He took a look at it. I mean, I picked this thing up in pieces and he didn't really ever use it you know even when they did have it in their home it never opened or closed they pretty much just left it with the leaves under there because nothing really ever worked to begin with so who knows the last time this thing really 
function, if it ever really did. He gave me a couple pointers, what, you know, he thought that he, sh he would do on it, maybe. I might do those things, but right now, I think the best bet for me would be to get these slides off. I had to make one repair, so I just went ahead and did that. I had to cut that new little, this looks like a little dovetail type of uh, stop in there. And that's what holds that level and that track and, you know, helps it to slide. So that was giving me problems. These slides were just so full of old schmutz and gunk. So I've just been here just sanding, getting these cleaned up, and then I want to fill these up here with some paste wax and get that slide nice and smooth. Then I'm going to put it back on, and I think that'll give me a much, much, much better idea of just how bad things might be <laughs> or how good things might be. I mean, it, I might put it back on there and everything's working great. And I want to get these legs behind me here, getting those sand up. So we'll get those sanded too. I'll show you how I'm doing that once I get these slides back on. And we'll just go from there. I'm kind of all over the place. Sorry about that. It's just the nature of the beast. <laughs> kind of hard to just work on one thing at a time. You kind of have to jump all over the place and... Um, you know, other projects I have to work on. And so. I got these all sanded up. Looking pretty. Now I just want to give these a good wipe down with some feed and wax. Very old, dry, brittle wood. This will just help bring back some moisture. And then once this sets up and dries, maybe do another coat. And then we'll do uh, the paste wax in the runners. But I mean, just with the sanding, that all moves. You know, damn near perfect already. Oop, forgot one. Son of a bitch. Got those all sanded up, cleaned up. Some feed and wax on there. They're looking pretty snazzy. Got that paste wax on them now and they slide nice and smooth. So now it's time to just get this puppy all back together. Give it another shot. First thing that I'm trying to do here, I drilled some holes. I got those sides lined up. I just need to go along, put all these little brass insert nuts in. A little tricky getting them started. They're so delicate, I already did a couple and they, they just break. Brass isn't very strong stuff, so the second it really starts to catch, I back it out and go back at it. That one's gonna break. Yeah. carefully yeah you see there 
once it really starts to catch on that. So I got that down far enough. What I'm going to do here too is just take a file and knock the tops off of all these along here. So putting two towards the end, two in the middle, six on each side, and then they will attach with those little machine screws that go down in there with the washer. Should be good. I'm just making these uh, holes a little bit more slotted. So that screw, if it needs to move back and forth, it can. Just drill a hole on either side. Clean it up with the chisel. Here's a look at one of those sides now. I got it screwed on. Went on really nice and tight. Should be good. You can see that top. It's on there and it's looking nice and flat. Everything's ready to roll. Let's get those slides on now. Well, buds, after a whole lot of messing and shimming and wedging and taking a little off here, a little off there, I think we finally got a table. I wish I could have shown you the whole process, but I'd also have to buy a few new memory cards. <laughs> Took a bit longer than expected, but I think it got... Got pretty good. I got to do a little touch up sanding the screws on the underneath there that I added. I had to recess those, so I had to chisel out a channel for them. I could show you those when I get this flip back over. But that was rubbing. Everything's working good now, so I'll, I'll set you down and give you, a, give you a sneak peek of how this thing works. Now we also have to keep in mind that this thing is probably over 100 years old. And after sitting for how many years, this wood will all be warped and bowed. Nothing will work as it originally did, even if it originally did work. This, as I told the customer, is a classic case of a designer or an engineer having a great idea with no real world building or application experience. You know, it's like when you go to change your oil in your pickup truck and they put that oil filter where you cannot get to it this is basically that table that's why you don't see any of these or a lot of these i've never really seen these out in the wild so you know i mean it's a great idea and it looks cool and if it works it's great but it it doesn't work <laughs> so i mean i can show you what i got here so you want to pop this back you know and you fold it in and you slide it in you got to give it a little bit of a little finesse. You know, it works all right though. You know, you know, lubing up those slides really made a big difference. And then this side's a hair tight. But that's uh that's what you get. And it works, you know, a heck of a lot better. You can hear a little rubbing in there. Which I'm not sure. I think it's on the side, it's not the top, so I don't know what to do. Maybe just take a little sandpaper and paste wax in there. It is what it is at this point. But then, uh, you know, we pull that out, these flip up, pull it up just a hair, give her a shimmy sham, a wacky whack. Hey, it's not bad. You know, when it works, if it works. But I'm sure if there's anybody out there with this table, you 
you could probably tell me that yours doesn't really work right. <laughs> That's why on a typical dining room table, I'm sure if you have one, the slides are attached at the bottom. There's a, you know, split in the middle. Then you just slide that puppy open, you put your leaves in there and you close it back up and it works just fine. This, this whole system, the way it's built and engineered, no. <laughs> That's why they don't really do that anymore. So let's get some finish on this, but we got to sand those legs. I got it to there with 80 grit on the sander. Now I just need to go around. I'm gonna hit it with the sander again real quick with 150 grit on that sander just because it is a little bit rough. But I don't wanna take anything down. I wanna leave that you know, old finish in there. And I'm just gonna take the sand, sandpaper by hand and just knock that finish down. I don't really wanna get, you know, I kinda of like that dark, you know, in those turnings. Going to try to leave a little bit of that character left in there. That's pretty much it. It took me about a, uh, probably about a half an hour that uh, time lapse was. So now I'm just going to hit this again with the sander. Then hit that by hand with the sandpaper a little bit. It'll be real good to go. There's the legs all sanded up. Ready for finish. But first, I want to get them attached to those stretchers that screw into the bottom of the table itself. You can see a lot of these are just so chewed up, have, uh, you know, just holes in them from all the screws. I don't know how good that's going to glue up. I tried to clean one up, and I just really wasn't happy with it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting the old ones off, drilling in, putting in just a little bit bigger, you know, getting that all nice and flattened down. Then I can put that into here and then just pound a wedge in with some glue. And I think it'll be just great. So I'm going to get all those done now, get them glued onto there. And I want to hit this with just a little bit of, little bit of stain to get that to match the other one on the table before I finish it. cut these little slots in there and round over that top especially this is a inch and three eighths dowel so when I pound that in it can go in a little bit better into that hole and then those little channels some of the glue can seep out through there as if there's kind of a, I guess like a vacuum or something created that won't really go in there very well or the whole way down you want to have a little bit of room for that glue to escape you know, whatever exit. I just gotta let that dry up and then I'll cut a slot there to pound a wedge.
when I mount these. There's the old piece, the color of it. There's the new ones. Pretty good match. Once I get a little finish on there, they'll look a little better, but they're also underneath the table, and who the hell is looking underneath the table with things? It's just for the principle of it all, I suppose. I like to make things look about as close to the original as I can get them. And I think that original wood might have been some cherry, but uh, it's just so cracked, dry rotted, everything, it's not much use anymore. You got the little notch cut in there to take that wedge. And when I put that in there, that'll spread that apart a little bit more. It's kind of like an ax. So I'm just gonna get this glued up. Nice and square. I could just cut that flush then when that glue dries up. It's finally starting to look like a table again. Got all those legs back on. So far so good. Let's get that right side up. See if everything works. Got it all set up. Everything slides out nice. The legs are all flat. No wobble. Time to get that apart. Alright buds. It's time to lay some lacquer. I got everything cleaned off, wiped down with my wax wash to remove any contaminants from the old finish or any polish that might have been used. You got to remove that, you know, the wax or the grease or the oils or the silicone, anything that might affect the new finish. So we got that all ready to go. It's still drying up a little bit, but everything's all set up, all ready to go. I got, uh, I took it apart a good bit so I could get to everything. I put a little bit of shrink wrap around that stuff that I didn't want some overspray to get on. And uh, we're all set up now. So I'm going to be spraying a semi-gloss pre-catalyzed lacquer on this piece. I will start with a vinyl sealer pre-catalyzed lacquer. Scuff that up. And then we'll finish that up with a coat or two of, you know, your semi-gloss pre-catalyzed lacquer. And if you want to learn more about that, Google it. <laughs> Okay there buds, that is everything sprayed with a sealer on the underside of everything. Got everything setting to dry. Just wanted to spray the underside of those legs. Got the leaves. Got the tabletop. So everything just needs to dry now for maybe a half an hour so I can flip it over. And then I can put it on a pin board. It's just a little bit too wet and tacky yet to flip over. So I think I'm going to give that a minute to dry, get it flipped over, get the rest of that sealer sprayed. That underneath of everything is always so time consuming and probably about my least favorite part. But once you spray that top side of sealer, you're really going to start to see it come to life.
I got that all scuffed up, ready for that finished top coat. It's looking great. I put the top back onto the base. We don't have to spray the underside anymore. We just need it sealed. So now I just gotta spray a little bit on the side, the top. Let's get those legs, two leaves. We'll be good to go. Well, buds, I got this uh, pretty much back together now, except for the legs. Just wanted to show you the underside of this. Get all these wedges in here, back to where they went. I got everything marked this time, and I did decide to put those middle little clips back in. Got everything good to go. Everything looks nice. Here's a little more close-up of how that top was reattached. Got those machine screws with a washer and that oval opening there. That should help that to move back and forth. Allow for expansion. And that top's nice and tight on there now. And everything is looking good. I'm going to get those legs on and flip it back over. Get the big old reveal. It should be good. There's a quick look at the, the wheels. They cleaned up pretty nice. Soaked them in vapor rust about 24 hours and then uh, just wiped them down, rinsed them off, then uh, gave them a good cleaning, wiped down with uh, three in one oil. And they all look just about the same. Cleaned up pretty good. Well, buds, there we are with another one done. This white oak dining room farmhouse table off the farm going into its new home. They're excited, I'm excited, I hope you're excited. I think it turned out pretty nice. Never would have thought that this would look like this. <laughs> so, as always, thanks for watching and following along. Make sure you are subscribed and hitting that like button. And if you want any t-shirts or anything, the link is in the description. Hit me up on Facebook, John Bear Woodworks. Instagram, John Bear Woodworks. Tech Talk, John Bear Woodworks. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. I know you're probably thinking, but bud, does it really work? So, let's see if it really works. You just gotta give it a little, little nudge. That slides down. Since these legs are on wheels, that just goes right in, tucks under there, real nice. Looks good. And to see that in reverse, how it is open. Folds up. Make sure those uh, little supports go into those clips. Give it a little taparoo. Same thing on this side. Open her up. Give it a little nudge. Works like a charm. Might even work better than it did originally. Mr. Babinski, are you ready? Are you ready for the run? Go. Cool.